Hello and welcome back to our monster chase game. In the previous video we have created our main menu and here is where we left off. So now what we need to do is we need to create our game manager who's going to hold both of our players inside of an array and based on which player we have clicked here, so which button we have clicked, it's going to create that player in our gameplay and allow us to play with him. So in order to do that I need to go under game object and click on create empty again and we need to name this one game manager so game manager like this under our scripts folder inside of our game controllers folder i'm going to right click inside of it and create a new c sharp script which is going to be our game manager i'm going to attach my game manager on the game manager game object and here it is so i'm going to double click on it and open it right here now what we need to do and before we do anything I'm simply going to tag it here so class and simply hold enter just to give a little bit of space so that we can see what we are typing and let me just click on this drop down list I don't know why this closes every time I open a new script but it's not important anyway what we need to do is we need to create a singleton out of our game object class what is a singleton a singleton allows us to only have a single instance out of this class and in order to do that let me go here and demonstrate notice when I hit play so everything is cool we are in our main menu notice here the game manager in the hierarchy panel he is hidden there and now if we click on one of these buttons and go in our gameplay so if I click on it and go in the gameplay we don't see or in our gameplay we don't have our game manager. So notice here we have the player, the main camera, backgrounds, grounds, moon, spawners, boundaries, sun, and so forth, our ghosts, but we don't have our game manager. We need our game manager to go along with us inside that gameplay scene. Of course we can go in the gameplay scene and attach or simply drag the game manager there, but that will do us no good because what we want to achieve here is we want to inform the game manager which game object or which button we have touched here and we cannot inform the game manager in another scene what we have touched in the previous scene that is impossible we need to inform the game manager that's here with us so that he can go inside of the gameplay scene when we go with him and then our game manager will know which button was clicked so in order to do that, what we need to do right here below our class, we need to type public static game manager and name it instance like this. So here we have the public static game manager instance. Instance is the name of our game manager, which is this one right here. So we are creating an object here. We are actually only declaring it because instance at the moment is equal to null. And here we have declared our game manager. So what we need to do here, and I'm going to remove the update function because we don't need it. I'm going to create a void make singleton function. Here what we need to do is we need to set the instance to be equal to our class. So instance is equal to this. And before that we need to type if instance, so instance, let me just finish this instance is equal to null so if instance is equal to null then instance is equal to this right here this keyword this refers to the class where we actually use it so this refers to game manager the class where we are using this keyword and which is the class that we are using this keyword well it's the game manager class itself so instance is equal to this actually means instance is equal to game manager it means like this so it means this and here I'm going to type this again and now what we need to do is we need to type don't destroy so don't destroy unload this what this actually means here is that we will not destroy this game object when we move to another scene we saw a moment ago that when we load our gameplay 
our game manager is no longer inside of our gameplay because he is destroyed in the main menu. When he tries to leave the main menu, he will get destroyed because we are not using don't destroy on load. And we are passing this referring to this game manager class. So if I go back or before that, here instead of start, I'm going to type awake. And I'm going to call our make singleton function inside of our awake function. Awake is the first function that's going to be called when we run our game in every script. So going back in our Unity editor now, I'm going to select our game manager and run the game. Notice that now when we go inside of our gameplay, we're going to carry our game manager along with us. So when I hit enter here, or when I click one of these buttons, Notice now that we have our game manager, which is right here. Notice it. It's the last object here in our hierarchy panel. And it's our game manager. Now we do have one problem with this right here. And I'm going to demonstrate that. But we need to go in our gameplay scene. And we need to create a button. So I'm going to go under UI and create a button. And here we have the canvas. I'm going to set the render mode to screen space camera, attach the main camera to it, and also set scale with screen size 1280 by 800, so 1280 by 720, not 800, excuse me, 0.5 to match width and height equally, and here is our button. What we also need to do, because we don't see the button in our game, is we need to take the canvas, and here we have these sorting layers. So we can set the order in layer, for example, at two, because if you remember, our backgrounds are at order in layer zero. We can set our canvas to be at order in layer at two, and it will be rendered on top of our backgrounds. So if we put it back at zero, we see that we don't see our button, but if we set it at two, then our button is visible. So what I want to do is I want to resize this button a little bit. So like this and position it here. I'm going to set its anchor to be at the top right corner. And I'm going to take the text of our button and scale it a little bit. And here I'm going to sim simply type back like this. So back, which is going to bring us back to our main menu. Let me see how this looks like like this. This is what we need. So simply put it at back. And in order for us to interact with this button, I'm going to go under game object, create empty. And here we are going to create gameplay controller. So gameplay controller like this. And go back in our scripts folder under game controllers, right click here, create a C sharp script. And this is going to be our gameplay controller. So gameplay controller attach it here on our gameplay controller game object and go inside so go inside right here let me just tag the script so script script and hold enter just to give a little bit of space so that we can see what we are typing remove this p that i accidentally wrote here and what we need here is a public void go to go to main menu and we also need our scene management. So using unity engine dot scene management. And here in our public void button, we need to type scene manager dot load scene passing here main menu and notice M is capital M is capital. So main M capital menu M capital. That's the name of our scene. This is how we need to write it. If we simply make this mistake main menu with lower m on the menu it will not work if the name is not correct going back i'm going to select our button and right here i'm going to click on plus and attach our gameplay controller on it so gameplay controller and select our go to main menu function so here when we click back we are going to go back in our main menu and notice what i want to demonstrate now so here we have our game manager and here I am going to run the game, click on one of these buttons and we are in our gameplay. We have the back button, which we can use to go back in our main menu. Here we have our game manager. If I go back 
So if I click and go back in the main menu, notice what happens now. We have two game managers in our scene. So we have two game managers in our scene, which is what we don't want because the first one was not destroyed. He's going back and forth in gameplay and main menu along with us. He will not be destroyed any in any scene that we go. Notice now if I go back again in the gameplay, we have both of these. So again, here we have the game manager. And if we go back now, so notice now, going back, again we have two of them. So gameplay manager. We don't want two. We only want one. And how we can achieve that is by using a singleton pattern. In order to achieve that, so here we are typing if instance is equal to null, instance is equal to this, and then we are destroying our game object on load. What we need to do instead is that we need to type here, first I'm going to delete all of this, and here what we need to type, we need to check if instance is not equal to null. So if our instance right here is not equal to null, we are going to destroy the game object. This means destroy the duplicate. So here I'm going to type destroy duplicate. And here I'm going to type else if our game object is actually null, then our instance is equal to this and don't destroy unload this or the game object. We can also pass here game object or we can pass this and it will not destroy it. So what we are doing here, when we first run our game, we only have one game manager. And when we run it, we are going to see that our instance is equal to null because when we first run our game, our instance is null and we are going to set it to this and don't destroy our game object on load. But when we go back from the main menu, from our gameplay, excuse me, to our main menu, then we are going to actually see that we have another game object. But since we are testing if the instance is not null, that other game object, the other duplicate game manager is going to be null. And then we are going to, or the one that's going back is not going to be null. So we are going to destroy the duplicate and we are going to have another instance and only one game manager. So if this is confusing, the explanation, we are going to simply test it out. So notice now we have one game manager. I'm going to run the game, go in our gameplay. Here it is. Here we have our game manager. If I click back, we only have one game manager again. Previously, and you can rewind the video a moment ago, we had two game managers right next to each other, but now we only have one game manager. So now that we have fixed that, what we can do with our game manager right here, or what we need to do is first, we need to create a serialized field. So serialized field, it's going to be a private game object array, and it's going to be our players. And we also need a public integer, which is going to be index. And I'm going to hide it in the inspector. So when you type this hide in inspector, it will not be visible here in the inspector panel when we, well, take a look at it. But here we have our two players and I'm going to set the size at two and I'm going to attach our two player prefabs. So game manager, here we need to drag player one. So right here it's player one and right here it's player two. Also make sure that you have attached everything on our players so they have box colliders, rigid bodies, scripts, so on and so forth, so that we can simply instantiate them. And notice that we don't see our integer right here. And if I remove this height in inspector, I'm simply going to comment it. And notice now we are going to see that integer right here in our inspector panels. He, we have here our index. So we don't want it, but we want it to be public because what we can do now is we can go in our main menu controller and here we can access our game manager by using its instance. So we can type here game manager dot instance dot index is equal to one or two or three or four or whatever. But we need to inform our game manager which button was touched. And notice if I go back here, under our canvas, 
for our buttons. I named it zero and one. So zero and one. Why is that? Well, because in our game manager, I have an array of two elements. The first element is at index zero and the second one is at index one. So what we can do here is we can type string name is equal to unity engine dot event systems dot event system dot current dot current game object or current selected game object dot name. This is going to give us the name of the game object that we have selected. I'm going to comment this loading scene. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to type print and the button that is pressed is plus our name. So notice now if we go back here in our scene, notice that when we press one of these buttons, we are going to see which one is pressed. When I press here, the button that is pressed is zero. When I press this one, the button that is pressed is one. These are the names of our buttons. If we change these, so if I say button one, and here I type button three, for example, I'm going to clear the console, run the game. If I click here, the button that is pressed is button one. If I click here, the button that is pressed is button three. So this is how we can get the names of our buttons. And we need to put them back at zero and one, which is really important because now that we have the name, what we can do is we can simply take our game manager. So not game object, game manager instance dot index is equal to, and here we can use int dot parse passing the name. What this will do, the parse function from the integer class, it will take a string and convert it into an integer. So now our index is going to be to the selected game object. And here we can now uncomment this, but in order to actually load our player, we need to go in our game manager and right here below awake, we need to type void on level loaded or on level was loaded. I believe this is the name of the method on level was loaded. Here we can check which level or scene was loaded. But before that, we need to type using unity engine dot event or excuse me, scene management. And here we can use our scene manager. So we can type here if our scene manager dot and here we can get the scene. So get active scene or we can type here, get loaded scene, so on and so forth. But we can type get active scene dot and we can get the name of the active scene if it's equal to our gameplay. So if the active scene that it's loaded is actually equal to our gameplay, we can instantiate our game object. And in order to do that, we can simply call the instantiate function. And here I'm simply going to pass the game object, which is under players. And here we are going to pass the index comma. The position is going to be new vector three. And I'm going to put zero for the X, negative three for the Y and zero for the Z axis and quaternion, not QE, quaternion dot identity. So quaternion, let me just type it right. Quaternion dot identity. So sorry for that. So now we are going to be able to load the player that we actually select. But before that, I'm going to go in our gameplay. So right here in the scenes gameplay, and we need to deactivate this one. So simply deactivate, select him here and in the inspector panel, just uncheck this checkbox right here, which will make him not active. Because now when we run our game and when we click on one of these players, notice when I click on this one, here it is, our player is loaded but he is loaded from the game manager. If I click on this one, now he is loaded. Why is that? Well, because if I go back again, explaining in our main menu, we are using Unity Engine event systems, event system current and the current selected object and his name, which will be either one or two. So excuse me, either zero or one. So zero or one. And we are then using that and setting the 
index of our game manager. So instance index is equal to that name. So it will be either zero or one. And here we are checking in on level was loaded. This is the method or function that's going to be called when we change scenes. So on level was loaded. And here we are checking if the loaded scene or the active scene is gameplay. So if we are in the gameplay, instantiate the player that's at the index that we have specified right here. So either zero or one. So instantiate that player at this position using this default rotation. So this is how we can select either of these players that we want and this is how we can now play our game. So if I go here and select one of these players, here we have this one and we can play the game with him. We can jump so on and so forth. We can go back and select this player and now we have this player and we can jump and do everything the same way as with the previous player. So I'm going to jump so on and so forth so we can play our game. So again here and now we have died and what is left for us to do is to detect when we collide with monsters and kill our player and after that restart our game. And we are going to do that in the next video. If you like what you see, please subscribe, share the video, comment. I'm trying to put these tutorials out. So if you share with your friends, that will be a huge favor for me because I'm planning to add a lot of videos and nurture this channel on a regular basis. So please share, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video.